Welcome to Paul Don Power. This is a special video edition to commemorate the Global Press uh, Media Summit that's going on right now in California. We've got a bunch of different companies and we'll have several video reports for you guys and gals out there from the media event. And we're starting off today with uh, Dennis Yost. He's the uh, President and CEO of uh, Cavendish Kinetics. And uh, we're talking about, in this context, RF power and uh, its power considerations for the engineer. I mean, RF is one of your most uh, power-hungry aspects of a system, wouldn't you say, Dennis? That's correct. If you really think about power amplifiers and running very efficiently and in their high linear region versus wasting you know, a lot in heat, it's one behind the screen in a cell phone. They consume more energy than anything, exactly, including the screen, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, including the screen, but the lighting of the screen. But the PAs, especially LTE PAs, you know, are very, very good hand warmers. They really can keep your hand warm in the winter time. And part of our application is to make components, in this case, uh, dynamically tuned capacitors, in order to improve the overall efficiency of the cell phone, both in transmit power, the efficiency of the PAs as well as the efficiency of making sure all the power gets transmitted out of the phone and there's not a lot reflected back in. Well, and that's a big issue, isn't it? Reflected power. If the antenna, if there's a, any kind of a mismatch or any problem with the antenna, you're just wasting power as heat. And it's also a, a problem for the system itself, isn't it? Yeah, uh, mismatch is one that actually wastes power. And there could be a mismatch between the system and the antenna, but then the other mismatch is between the antenna and the outside world. And both mis mismatches have to be managed in order to have the most efficient performance. And so really making that efficiency good, that it actually has high transmission uh, gain, really is the key to making the power amps and all that operate in their most efficient regime. Exactly. Now, obviously, we're talking about the antenna here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, when, you th when it comes to the antenna, you hear things about fractal antennas, and you hear things about various tunable types of antennas. Where, what is your approach? Where are you coming to this problem from? So we're supporting pretty much any kind of an antenna type. But in a cell phone, what ends up happening is you shrink the antenna well below the quarter wavelength of the frequency. And when you shrink it, it's not very efficient. Mm. So consequently, when the antenna is not very efficient, you have to make it very narrow band, or if you make it very wide band covering all the frequencies, it's terribly inefficient. So what we're doing, whether it's fractal antennas, whether it's uh, loop antennas, whether it's PIF antennas, we're enabling a dynamic load to be placed on that antenna, which actually tunes the resonant frequency of that antenna to the frequency of choice. And I gather this is a MEMS technology. That's right, and we're using MEMS to do that. MEMS actually has the highest, what's called quality factor, which is really inversely proportional to the power lost in the system, but has the highest quality factor available. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of how you actually accomplish this? So we basically take a MEMS technology that's completely compatible with CMOS, and we build what we call switchlets. Switchlets is one capacitor, and it switches either in a max state or min state. We array roughly 500 of those together, so our chip actually has on the order, in reality, of about 1,000 moving parts. And consequently, when they're all up, they're at a min state. When they're all down, they're at a max state. And then we binary weight them to actually go from min to max. So it's truly a digital capacitor, but then it ranges from the min state to the max state based on how many switches are in that one state. So that's a very interesting way to approach it. So basically, it's almost in, I wouldn't call it a linear scale, but it's a very smooth. Oh, it's completely linear. Oh, in fact, is? if you compare us to uh, D to A converters, uh, or A to D converters, uh, with an INL or DNL, the variability on our LSB is less than 0.15% of the LSB. So that's a very good figure. Significantly better performance than even a, a high performance D, uh, A to D. Do you, uh, offhand, do you know how large your solution is? Yeah, actually, we're sub two square millimeters. Our product is a CSP chip scale package made to go right on the circuit board, and it's well under two square millimeters. Now, obviously, it takes some power to operate this device, even though it's saving power. What, ki what kind of power consumption does it? Uh... Yeah, our product is roughly uh, 1.8 volts, runs at 100 microamps, so just a little bit under two microwatts. Oh, okay. And what kind, of, what kind of uh, energy savings do you normally expect, depending on, say, a, a standard antenna arrangement? Well, in, in the low frequency end, we're, we're basically moving the antenna efficiency from the 10 to 15 percent efficient to the 35 percent efficiency. So you get the power transmitted, but you also have better received signal. So then you get better 
cu coupling from the antenna into the phone as well when you're getting a uh, receive signal. And interestingly enough, that would also reduce your thermal problems, wouldn't it? Yes, it does, for sure. Yes, it does. Uh, because the, the transmit, actually, you're then not running basically full out on the PAs. And on the receive side, you're able to get your data in and out, and you're not doing a ton of error correction, which is actually what ends up happening uh, that your bit error rate is, is fairly poor when you're outside cell area. Well, Dennis, that's all very interesting, and I think this is very interesting technology. I uh, know that our audience would like to know how they can find out more about it. So you can go to our website. Uh, it's www.cavendish-kinetics.com. And that's all spelled the way it sounds. That's all spelled exactly the way it sounds. No funny characters. No or... funny characters. Cavendish-kinetics.com. Excellent. Is there anything else about your technology you wanted to leave with our audience before we closed out the episode? Well, one of the things that people tweet uh, quiz this all the time on is what is the reliability of MEMS? It's a big question. In fact, people have been working on these types of products for 30 years. And one of the things that we've been focusing on is ultimate and reliability. And basically, we have the reliability of standard CMOS with our MEMS technology. Impressive. Well, hey, Dennis, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you very much, Alex. And I'd like to thank all of you out there for being part of us, because without you, we wouldn't exist. Tell your friends. This is Alex Palt for Palt on Power. Have a great day.